yeah, yeah. What's going on? What's going on? We know what's about to happen. What's good? What's good? Y'all already know. What's the checking like? What's that checking like? What's that checking like? Where y'all from? Y'all already know. I don't start nothing unless we know what the check-in's like. What's that check-in like? Where y'all from? Let me know where y'all from. Sersky. Where y'all from? You telling me about your music that I'm not going to listen to? I just need to know where y'all from. Harlem is in here. I see you. I see Florida in here. I see KC is in. New Mexico is in here. Jersey, what's good? Jersey, Toronto in here, okay. Macon, Georgia. Jersey again. Houston, heavy. North Cackalack. Vallejo. I don't know why I said Vallejo. That, is that like how E40? Vallejo is a rizzle. The 419. I don't know where that's at. Harlem, Carolina. You from Carolina. Um, Broward, okay. New Zealand, France. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Tampa, what's good? South Africa, okay. As y'all can see, I'm on road, so just work with it. Gainesville, I see y'all. Rhode Island, didn't, didn't know they made people in there, okay. Rhode Island. Virginia, Suffolk, 757. Shout out to 757. Bosnia, wow, that's lit. Chicago, I see you now. Scandinavia, don't know where that's at. Please tell me. Toledo, okay. That's what the 419 is, okay. Buffalo, I see y'all. Texas, all right. Yo, is Robin Hood music in here? What's up with Snoop? You gotta ask Snoop. New Orleans, yeah, hey, I see. Yo, text cab telling me what, man? Missouri. Ethiopia, I see y'all. What's poppin'? Yo, Robin Hood music, where you at? All right, everybody, listen. I'm glad everybody's checking in from all over the country, all over the world. Maine, Iraq, I see y'all. So we getting into it like we get into it every single week, like we've been doing for the past nine weeks. Shout out to everybody being here for the past nine weeks. This is After the Breaks, the official after show of the iHeartRadio, Def Jam, and Elvis, uh, and Double Elvis uh, podcast. Here comes the break, starring superstar Asante Black. Um, and some of your favorite Def Jam artists, some of your new favorite Def Jam artists. So this week they had on Bobby Sessions. He'll be checking in. We also have Robin Hood music. Yes, Robin Hood. Yes. If y'all acting like y'all know, know who that is, that is Dre from The Shot. We have both of them checking in. So I'm just waiting for them to get in here. And we're going to hit it, man. It's fire. It's fire. This week's episode was great. I see Bobby Sessions. All right. I see Bobby Sessions in here. Boom. Boom. Quest. There you go, Bobby. What's good, my boy? Yo, yo, what's good? Ain't nothing. What's going on? Uh, Feeling good. Robmo, we got you. Oh, What's good, go, gentlemen? There you go, there you go, there you go. How y'all feeling? How everything all right? Got, yeah, everything everything good. Everything's crisp. How are you? Everything's crisp. No complaints. No complaints. Everybody's skin looking good. Everybody looks ready. To, <laughs> yeah, looking good. Everybody <laughs> looks like we all had our uh, prescribed amount of water today. That's right. That's all right. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I knew right, Bobby so like, was going to be here, so I had to look my best, you know? I know. <laughs> right? You can't, can't play with Bobby. <laughs> uh, all right uh bob you are our fave you are our resident archivist so you know it's only right we, we we start off with you please let the people know uh who who you are what it is that you do some of your work and how you landed at Def jam well yeah i'm bobby sessions the the young legend from dallas texas i would describe myself as a master of manifestation i take ideas from my mind and work actively to hold them in my hand and Def Jam was one of those manifestations. That's fire. That's fire. So growing up, you always knew you wanted to sign with Def Jam, or you just knew, like, the manifestation of, like, 
getting signed to a major? Um, I think I had a um, I had Def Jam on a dry race board in 2014. Uh, mainly, oh, wow. I think I was moved in that direction because I viewed I viewed it as the home for like the unapologetic voices. And I know mm. that you know with some of the the topics and things that I speak on, it seemed like it would be a great fit. Absolutely, absolutely. Robin Hood. What's good? AKA, you got a lot of AKAs. I do. You got a lot of AKAs right now. Yes, yeah, <laughs> AKA is Dre from the Shy. Yeah, yeah. Little, little, little mischievous, but in a good way this season. Uh, exactly. Always. <laughs> let me let me not stop on your 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 intro. Let the people know who who it is that you are, what it is that you do, the many hats that you wear. Yeah. So first of all, appreciate you having me. You know. Of course, of course. Yeah, most definitely. Um, much love, respect to you, Bobby, and just to everybody that has tuned in. So my name is Miriam A. Hyman, aka Robin Hood, and uh, I am an independent artist, um, a hip hop lyricist, as well as an actress. And I'm currently playing Dre on the Shy. I got introduced season three. They brought me back season four. This is on Showtime. You can catch us on Sunday nights. And um, yeah, I just dropped my most recent EP called The Fourth Quarter. And uh, you know, I'm I'm a Libra, so you know, I need balance in my life. I work in tandem, so I drop a season, I drop an EP. You know, it's just fire, like that. Fire. <laughs> right. is, yeah. that is that is that hard to stay uh, on task with, like um, mentally? Like you may be able to like you know tap in and write because that's what you do, but yeah. like mentally giving it your all and being able to get from Dre the character back into Robin Hood the artist is that yeah. a hard transition? It's not a, a hard transition because you know work is work and play is play. So you know when I'm on set and I'm in Dre mode, you know when I'm in telling the story of what this you know what this is for this show, I'm you know a modern day griot. So when I'm there, oh. I'm telling that story. When I'm in the booth, I'm telling that story. And so I really just get motivated as opposed to getting distracted or. You know, wow. frustrated by having by wearing multiple hats. I welcome it. You know what I mean. Wow. So, it's just for me. It was a, a it was a dope way to also spend my off time when I was in Chicago because we shot yeah. for like five months. You right. know, I'm from Philly and I I know those winters, but I I live in L. A. Now. You know what I mean. So you know, <laughs> shit is different. You believe so, me, Philly winter ain't got shit on Chicago winter. That's cold, oh cold. Listen, my mom lives in Chicago, so I've been going to Chicago over the years for like, it, it's, bro, like I left LA, it was 70 degrees, got to Chicago, all my shit, it was literally like 12 below. I was like, yeah, no, you, know, you need a coat from <laughs> Chicago to brave Chicago. Oh, you know, the Canada Goose, you know, they had to come out. I had the Ugg <laughs> boots and everything. Like that LA stuff went out the window when I showed I up. You. Yeah. Uh, Bob, <laughs> I want to ask you the same question Um, as an artivist. Do you find it sometimes difficult to distract in the transition from um, activists to artists and, and back and forth? Mm. Uh, that's a great question. I would say not really because I think everybody got roles to play. So, for example, my my priority is the art and making the activism present in the art because that's like because you got I don't want to disrespect people where they got activism is what they do nonstop. And then they listen to music on the side. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, my role is I'm going to get the message across as much as I can through the music and through, you know, some of the things that we're doing outside of music. And I just let my, my voice be heard in that regard, which is why I made that Revolution series. And then now with uh, Manifest being out and talking about manifestation and law of attraction, uh, offering as many solutions as possible. Mm. Fire. Fire. I, I, man, I already know we about to have a good conversation, man. We got some great <laughs> minds here, man. Let me just salute y'all on y'all minds, man. I, I'm blessed to even have an opportunity to talk to y'all with a mind like this. Thank um, you. So, so let's jump into episode nine. We have we have gotten to episode nine. We have grown. We have uh, had some feelings hard and soft towards what has transpired between Ruben and those surrounding him. Um, I think at this point we, 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 we're with Ruben. As he's coming out of this uh, metamorphosis, right? Like, he starts off the series as this real timid guy who's really controlled by his trauma and controlled by um, his anxiety and and kind of has leaned on everybody else to, you know, get him through it, whether it's his best friend Marco and Marco having to stand up for him or just his parents and them, you know, him, him not really wanting to ruffle feathers and, you know, play that perfect son role. But in you know, in becoming no uh, mask on, 
and, and having this podcast and having this voice that people are loving and, and you know, maybe bucking the system some, we now have the Ruben we see in episode nine that he's lived and he's grown and he's now standing for himself. Um, so, you know, even with, you know, it opening up with him and therapy and, and you know, taking the medicines and, and hoping that it keeps the anxiety at bay, him getting into, you know, I think it was really dope, him uh, getting into uh, meditation. And it talked about how last episode he couldn't get through the full 10 minutes. But by the end of this episode, he's he's over the minutes. You know, that he heard that he heard that gong go. He's like, oh man, like that was the quickest 10 minutes of my life. <laughs> so let me ask you guys, what has your relationship been with anxiety, meditation, if any? Bobby, you want to go first? Sure. Okay. Um yeah, I had a brief period uh some years back where I had experienced anxiety for the first time. It wasn't something that um, I was accustomed to. I had lived a pretty a pretty long while without experiencing it. I was one of the people that thought I was immune to it, to be honest with you. Mm. And then so when it hit me, it, it really hit like a, a ton of bricks. And all of a sudden, I have no control over my thoughts and what my uh, or my emotions. And I went through a, like a brief stint of depression, which led me going to Google and typing in, uh, how does the mind work? And that was like the beginning of uh, like retooling and reprogramming the mind. So I've been like a, a real heavy student in like the self-help se section with like the secret and think and grow rich, the alchemist, the seven spiritual laws of success, oh, yeah. four agreements, like pretty much every book you can think of in that world. And um, after I was able to retool and reprogram my mind, I made it my mission to to put that info in the music to help people that's dealing with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm loving just getting to know you, Bobby. I feel like we have so much in common, you know, I'm feeling a collab. Absolutely. Going. Holla at me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but speaking of manifestations, you know, um, I always say, you know, we have to speak it into existence, whatever it is that you hope to obtain. Um, and that mental health has to be 100%. And there are a lot of people, um, in the secondary profession that I have, you know, as an actor, um, where it get, it can be very challenging. You know, you get overwhelmed with different opportunities or not getting certain opportunities or, you know, just feeling like you're being boxed in. It's a, it's a, a plethora, you know, of issues that one could come up against. But um, mm -hmm. like yourself, a few years back, you know, I kind of had a bit of a situation and, um, you know, I was like in the hospital for a little bit and it was a matter of, me just really, really regaining my confidence, getting back on my feet. And it was a, it was a quick thing, you know, because I was in New York and, it, it, you know, it's, it's tough. So you don't have time to, you know, you have to take the time to heal and everything. But at the same time, you got to get back out there, you know, and um, it just really, if it's, if it's something that you want, nobody is going to do that hard work but you, you know. And so I had to just kind of, you know, pick myself back up and really just start to, just get very honest with myself in terms of what I wanted, what I, how I wanted to try to attack it. And um, I didn't have, I didn't have, a, you know, any of the answers. I didn't have a lot of the answers, but I had a lot of questions, you know? And so um, now I feel like I'm in a, a much, you know, better place, a much healthier place um, and a better space in order to be for myself and for others, you know, and, you know, just my peers in general, you know, with the, with the type of material I put out. I got to be in the right, you know, frame of mind, you know, or, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm setting a crazy example because it's not an right. example that's specific in any way, shape or form. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So so, so also on this episode, uh, we see that the gang is back together. You know, Marco, after a month of Marco and Ruben going back and forth and not really <laughs> messing with each other, they're back together. The whole all three, Marco, Janelle. And, and Ruben, the entire Here Comes the Break cast is back together. Um, and they start talking about sponsorships. And there is a, a holistic sponsor that wants to sponsor them. And right back, Ruben, you know, kind of, you know, in, in, in what we thought he had conquered. And maybe, you know, you guys can talk to this as well. When Right when he thought he conquered the anxiety, he starts getting anxious again. And it's like, well, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to ruffle feathers and I don't want to get in trouble. Um, so have you guys ever dealt with that um, with, with your brands, um, you know, wanting to spot, be sponsored or, you know, everybody wants a sponsorship. Everybody wants that extra yeah. money. 
Yeah. Um, but it not really aligning with what you're doing, or maybe the reverse, right? With maybe you wanted to work with a sponsorship, but maybe a project that you've already been contracted to is like, ah, that's not really aligning with our, like, have, what, what's that juxtaposition like? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can speak to that. I actually, I've had a positive uh, situation, which is good. You know, like you said, you know, a lot of different people, they start to see um, how you're kind of branding yourself and they want to be a part of that or help, you know, to assist in some way. And actually this company I have on right now, Young Fly Righteous, you know, it, they just kind of came about while just watching my page, tuning in to what I was doing, listening to my music, so on and so forth, and reached out. And I was really feeling them, what they, what they stood for. I was feeling the gear for sure. And then right. it worked out in a positive way because I had presented them to Showtime and said, look, you know, I'm really rocking with this team. Can we get them on the show in some capacity? So it was a blessing to be able to help another, you know, just young black individual that's like trying to build up. And, you know, Showtime is all, the, the shy specifically is all about, you know, helping black business and everything. Absolutely. But that was that was something that came from me, you know what I mean? Which was Which was cool because, they got their stuff featured in the show twice, you know? So right. I try to stay away from the people who aren't really serious and rock with the individuals who really do. And as I'm, my dreams are coming true, assisting them and helping theirs come true as well, you know? What about makes you, Bob? Per- yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I think yeah. with any type of sponsorships, I have to, one, be into whatever it is. Exactly. Like, yeah, I have to be a fan of, a fan of what it is. And everybody has to be cool with uh me not making any compromises as far as what i'm what i'm on <laughs> no it's, yeah, real. What it's real yeah what i'm on like um yeah, yeah if since the, the main pillars of my thing is uh manifestation and 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 making sure black people are safe if you have a problem with those two things i don't think uh it know, ain't gonna work <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not going to work. I don't even know how you have a problem with that. So exactly. Uh, yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah. Now, Bobby, I want to get into your portion of the show specifically, because I think that is a, that's probably the best interview I've heard um, on, on the series. Appreciate um, it. I think there's just a lot of gems that I don't know if people want to uncover. So I just want to, you know, elaborate on something here. Right. You actually said, uh, you said on the on the podcast uh, when talking about support, and you know basically not feeling entitled to support. Mm-hmm. You said your your parents did not believe they did not support. They couldn't support you because they didn't believe. Can you just elaborate on on, on that? Because I think some people may hear that and be like, "What? You're a parent. You're supposed to believe." Like, can you just elaborate on that for for some of the creatives at home. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. early on in in my. Uh, when I was rapping um, and just being uh, entitled creative, I felt like I was dope. So everybody that around me should support that. And that's bullshit. That's not yeah. how, that's not how things work. Like you can't, my parents or what I touched about in there, they don't, they don't owe me support because those are my parents. When I decided to leave from staying under their roof and not doing things the way they felt I should do, and I wanted to go on my own path. I can't make them jump on my path. Like, hey, y'all should support me and all that shit. Like, that's just not how thing how things work. And when my mom said I couldn't support you early on because I didn't believe in it, that changed my life because I realized I can't. I've been living entitled to even think just just because y'all are my parents. Y'all are supposed to be like, hell yeah, like go rap and where it's like one percent of people that make it in that yeah 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 go do that hell yeah we're gonna be your biggest cheerleaders for you like they're trying to make sure that i can survive and not uh you know not be out on the street somewhere or something that's like saying you're a rapper and and you come up in a city and you're mad at natives of that city for not supporting you because they should support just because y'all are from the same city like that's crazy right like that don't it's a natural uh, mentality to develop but it's not one that's ultimately going to lead you to the desired outcome and once I realized that oh nobody owes me anything mm. and I work and I worked out of that space ironically I began to garner and attract support particularly from my parents they were some of my they ended up being some of my biggest supporters before shit really started to take off for real for real just because they saw how dedicated I was to it and they saw that I was going to do this with or without their 
support. <laughs> right. And, and yeah, and then they came on board um after the fact. And everything else from getting a manager for the first time or signing my first deal and signing with Def Jam, all of these other things, these are just other words for support. Yeah. For, <laughs> that that was attracted from not working out of a out of a place of entitlement. And that's what I, I was getting at on this question. episode. I want to ask the same question to you, um, to, to, to you, Robin Hub, and then I want to add both of you the same question uh, regarding sure. something. So. Sure. Um, yeah, for me, you know, it's interesting that, like you said, your the initial response, I guess, from your parents wasn't supportive. Like, when I first told my mom I wanted to act, she said very blatantly, you know, and honestly, um, I don't think you're the actor in the family. I think it's your brother. So hearing those words, you know, as a kid, it's like, whoa. And... I, initially, I wanted to be a brain surgeon, like, you know, when I was a kid. So I had seen a film, I completely became inspired. And it was just like, whoa, you know, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And it's a testament to, um, I guess, just my hunger, you know, growing up in Philly, not, you know, being in a very impoverished community and not initially getting that support that made me say, you know what, I have to do this for myself. And if everybody wants to jump on at some point, then cool. And it's just, here we are, I'm shooting the shy in Chicago where my mom resides now, you know, and it's like, you (laughs) you know what I mean? You got your kid. I literally, I had one of the last days of shooting, I was shooting like a couple of blocks away from my mom's house, like right, you know, through the park and Mm. like right there are trailers and, you know, stuff was set up. So, you know, she's super happy and coming out the crib and like, oh, there goes my babe, you know, but sometimes you just have to, you can't want it for anybody else. You know, you mm. have to want it for you. And if people at some point want to want to jump on and, and understand what this is, that you're going to, you know, get this accomplished by hook or crook, then, hey, and if and if they don't, it's all good. I'm still going to do me, you know, because I, I have to, you know. Um, so, yeah. So I want to ask you really? both this question. Then. Having that shared experience, also having the shared experience of uh, success in spite of. Yeah. How did you guys not hold a grudge <laughs> against your parents when they are the ones that, you know, a kid typically looks to? And both yeah. of you guys have that same story where, you know, it was your parents, your mother specifically. I was like, eh, no, we will see it for you. And now you're successful, and I guess they're happy. How do you allow them access to that? How do you allow them access yeah. to your success and, and, and giving them the – uh, opportunity to bask in this moment with you without holding a grudge. I, I just spoke, Bobby, so I'll get it to you, and then I'll I'll piggyback. <laughs> okay, okay, bet. Um, it was easy for me one because they they came a they came around uh, with what I was doing before I got a certain level of success still, and was like super super um, ended up being super supportive. But one of the main things is there's a book called The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. one of those agreements is don't take things personal. Yeah. Mm. So once I realized, okay, the advice that was given to me was the intention behind the advice was words of protection. Right, right. They they want me to be good. And at the end of the day, I can't penalize them for not seeing something that's in my head when my physical reality did not reflect or show any type of signs that this was going to be successful. I was telling, I was telling my parents, I was a, I'm Bobby. So I'm the young legend as I was stocking cans at Walmart. So looking at it from that perspective, I can see them being like, eh, I don't know. Cause you're stocking cans at fucking Walmart. No disrespect, (laughs) but I'm like, that's, I'm like, I, how can I take offense to that? I'm not showing that this is going to turn into what it, what it ended up uh, becoming. Like, they can't see inside of my mind. I see what's in my mind. So how can I penalize you for not buying in to that? Like, that just doesn't make sense. So as things, you know, started to, to shift and they started to support, I was appreciative that they looked out because I think I would have been more upset if they didn't believe in nothing that I was doing and they was like, hell yeah, like, go, go do that. Da, da, da. And they, and they was afraid to to say what they felt because they thought it would hurt my feelings or something yeah. like that. I would rather you give me the respect of telling me what it is. I can respect honesty over like 
you, you saying something honest and it's not something I want to hear as opposed to you saying something that's fake and you don't really believe that, but you don't have enough confidence in me to believe that I can take on yeah, yeah. that truth that you felt like. So just because right. it, it ended up working out, it's like every time I do something, when I, when I took my Grammy out the, out the, the box, I, I passed it to my parents. We all drank Bel Air out of it. Like, <laughs> it's like, nah, it's cool because y'all made a lot of sacrifices for me to, you know what I'm saying, to, to be where I'm at today. So y'all not buying into that in the very beginning. That's nothing to hold 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 against somebody. So right, right. I agree with that 100%. And um, also I'll say like, you know, I, I started off like in the theater. So I had a bit of a shift. Um, my journey's been kind of like, you know, all over the place. But right. Um, so the support, you know, it, it, it grew. And I think part of that was because they saw how focused I was, both of my parents, and then I'm one of seven, so all of my siblings, and I'm baby girl. So, you know, it was a thing of, um, I think initially as a kid, when I was saying I want to be a brain surgeon, I'm growing up in West Philly, I'm growing up in the hood, like, we're ducking down, you know, it's, it's drugs and all kinds of craziness that you're coming up against. And at the end of the day, like you said, Bobby, it's protection. They want to make sure that at the end of the day, you're good. And you're not just making these like, you know, lofty decisions and having these crazy ideas. And they right. want you, they want you to have something that's realistic. I think at the end of the day, and something that's going to provide a level of stability. You know, my mom is always like, make sure your housing is straight, make sure your housing is good. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and that's ultimately your foundation. So, you know, to, to hold that against them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be blessed. You know, Nick and Giovanni said, you know, how do you, you know, hold dear what you, what you love the most? And it's like, give it away. You know what I mean? So you give support, you give that love, and it's going to come back to you, you know? So it, it, it is what it is. The initial response it was my reality. And I think, honestly, I probably had to hear that. I'm one of those people that has to hear like, oh, you can't do it. Or, oh, you know, even when I, I went to Yale to get my master's and like. Fire. The, Crazy. Yeah. Thank you. And one of the things that pushed me there is I had a mentor who said, you know, as I was looking at programs, she was like, oh, you know, NYU would be good. Yale would be good. Yale would be great if you could get in. All I heard was the if. Right. All I heard was like, like oh, it's like a challenge to me. You know what I mean? So I'm, a, you know, I'm going to come with the exact opposite, but I'm glad that, you know, both of those things happen to us where we could just kind of like receive it, absorb it and let that, you know, motivate you to really get out here. And then they can, they really see like, Oh, okay. You really, you know, this is, this is serious. You know, you're really about this. And then, you know, the, the love is right there. So I'm, I'm grateful, you know? Well, listen, I think sometimes I think that uh, parents just are like, just parenting out of fear. Right. And mm -hmm. I hope that that's what our generation stops with. I know all of us probably represent like a different right, right. section of a, of a generation. But like right. with my kids, that's what I'm hoping I'm not doing. Right. So like there is no dream too big. Right. What do you want to do? Fuck it. Go do it. I don't exactly. know if you can do it or not, but we're going to find out together. Hell right? yeah. And I think our parents grew up with just wanting to have successful kids. You know, they put it, I think. And, I, and it's not right and it's not wrong in my eyes. I think whatever they didn't finish, they want us to finish. Exactly. And, and, and I, exactly. like I said, I don't know if that's wrong. I don't know if that's right. But I think that's what happened. So, like, I yeah. dealt with the same thing with, with, with just wanting to be a personality and wanting to be a host. Like, my parents never heard of that. You know, my dad. <laughs> right. My dad heard of, he was, like, you had to tell him, like, you know, person on the radio, but not on the radio. Like, right. person who introduces the show, but, like, He's the star of the show. Like, I want to do that. And um, he, he he didn't understand it, but he understood how much I wanted it. My mother, exactly. on the other hand, was like, no, what? There's no benefits. There's no nine to five. You know, you need a job with insurance. And it's just right. trying to get them to understand it to where, you know, the reason I asked that is because I had that very same conundrum where it was like, oh, now y'all see I'm that nigga. I'm going to support <laughs> Nah, I don't know if I want you to be able to support this. But on that same hand, you know, we're kids and we want to please our parents. So it's, you know, you live in that kind of uh, uh, purgatory for a bit. Um, but I think you guys both dropped a bunch of gems for the creatives in the chat. It, I hope there's some parents of creatives in the chat and um, yeah. they're able to have some dialogue after this and, and are able to, you know, 
meet in the middle so nobody has to worry about, you know, because as I'm sure we all figured it out, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we would have loved to have that support and that net of, of love, right? Hell yeah. To, to do it, you know, um, even though we did it in spite of, right? Um, so like I said, I hope this, uh, I hope this, you know, promote some type of dialogue amongst creatives and their parents. Um, before we get out of here, I'm going to open the floor to you guys to let the people know what you got going on, how they can support. I know the shy is on every Sunday. You cheated me last Sunday. Y'all didn't say nothing. Listen, um, I didn't I know either. Was, I figured it was the 4th of July, so I'm like, maybe that's why. Yeah. And I know Manifest is out, so Bobby, uh, Robin Hood, it's on you. Yeah, so basically, like you just said, definitely tune in, check out the shy. You can stream the episodes past. And uh, my most recent EP called um, The Fourth Quarter is currently out. You know, stream it, purchase it. You know what I mean? Feel free to support. And uh, also, I got some music dropping on the shy. So episode five, one of my joints, Drip Flow, dropped off of my Alter Ego uh, EP. And then I got some more coming. So definitely just, you know, tune in. Follow me at Robin Hood Music. It's all love. Robin with a Y. Holla when I fly by. Let's go. Earth. <laughs> What's hot? Yeah, and it's uh, Bobby Session, young legend from Dallas, Texas. Manifest yeah. is out now. It's a, a self-help audio book in hip-hop form, and it's going to be the soundtrack to you manifesting your dreams, taking ideas in your mind and holding it in your hand. And for Ooh. everybody that's been tuned in, uh, don't take the opinions of everybody so personal. You have to know what's right for you, and it's not really for uh somebody else to understand and you have to become comfortable with the uncomfortable feeling of being misunderstood as Ooh. you close the gap between who you are and who you want to be you got you got old oh my boy this boy oh my <laughs> boy, geez, boy. <laughs> love, love. Man, we gotta do this in person i'm coming to dallas man right right we both <laughs> on the plane let's go yeah, we're pulling it up, man. it's crazy well listen right. i'm mouse jones make sure you guys keep tuning in to here comes the break episode 10 the last episode next week so if you haven't listened make sure between now and next thursday y'all listen to here comes the break on our radio itunes or wherever you get your apple podcast um make sure you follow robin Hood music make sure you follow bobby sessions i'm mouse jones we'll see y'all next week peace, peace.